Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 as Germany, episode number 5. So we had this uh, continuous assault on Guam in the last episode. We are still hoping for an invasion event, but it, this still does take, I believe, if the patch notes are correct, a 3-1 to one or 4-1 to one, um, strategic point uh, advantage in order to initiate. So we're just kind of burning money until we can get that. And right now you can see that in Southeast Asia, we have 5 battleships for 45 points, obviously 9 points each. And U.S. has one battleship, one uh, armored cruiser, two light cru cruisers, and 15 destroyers. Which in order of points is 9, 7, uh, 3 each, and 1 each, as far as each of those goes. So that may or may not add it up to 38. If any of those are rating, they don't count towards the strategic points in the, in the sea zone. Now, one of the things I've been talking about a little bit is how I don't really understand how this mechanics works. Um, what we can see is the Carsonis, which is a uh, 13,000 ton ship. Also, our armored cruisers are 7 points strategically. This is worth 10. I don't understand where this 10 comes from. Is it possibly? I've been trying to keep in the back of my head. Maybe it's an average of tonnage and strategic, strategic points per ship. That's maybe possible because... 7 and 13 does exactly equal 10. So that's my current, <laughs> let's see, does it work over here? So these cruisers are three points each, but their actual weight is 5,500. Let's call that six because it, I assume it would round up. So six and three, oh, that's kind of hard. <laughs> if it was five, it'd be a lot easier. This would obviously be just be four. So if it's four each, well, if they're five each, it would it'd be equal to 10. So maybe there is some kind of average. I don't, ah, look, it's confusing. It's definitely not, definitely not clear. And so that, that doesn't matter though. I just wanted to point that out. Now our money situation is not amazing, um, but I think we're gonna be okay. I'm really curious how much these bases are costing us in maintenance, but there's zero for naval aircraft and maintenance is 14. Construction 16, but the 16 is this, I suppose. 7 times 2.3 is probably 7, 16. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so who knows? I don't know where if those air bases actually cost us money in the end. So we're moving our forces. At the end of the last episode, we started moving our forces to combat those little domination heads ups, even though it's like what? 40, 50, 60 victory points, maybe 100. It's really not that much in the grand scheme of things considering we're up by so much. And even though we have a huge coastal, or I'm going to keep calling it coastal patrol, which is what it was known as in Rule the Waves, the original. Um, but now it's known as trade protection. Yes, that's right. We have a lot of people on trade protection, but it is not protecting our trade. Someone else has mentioned that maybe they think it's bugged, um, that it might not be um, exactly as good as it could be. Anyway, um, we have one person in West Africa, we have one person moving to Southern Africa, another one moving to the Indian Ocean. So hopefully this will prevent those pop-ups now. It looks like we're getting assorted, uh, sorted into all these places. But it looks our, our also our raiders have just done almost nothing in Europe, which is a little bit surprising. Now if we wanted to really force the issue, these are pretty fast. Actually, I know how we want to force the issue. This is going to be fun. We'll see how this goes. We're going to send this raider into the west coast. That's right. America. I'm oh, sorry, the east coast. That would make a lot more sense. Into the American east coast. That's right. We're going to go raid in their home waters and see how they like it. Not that we really need to, but just more to maybe initiate uh, a combat. All right, we have quality, negative one, 13-inch guns. Actually, not that good. Um, no to all. Oh, okay, we sank at a destroyer, which really doesn't amount to much this early on. Those aren't, they aren't expensive, they don't really do much. So we want to keep an eye on this East Coast uh, Karsh, because we don't have any ports there, obviously. So we, she will eventually get a star, and then if she, if she takes any damage, she doesn't, there's no neutral port to, for her to return to, so she'll probably just be scuttled. Oh, we've done it! Oh, hooray! This is, a, this is a glorious, glorious moment. And we have Torpedo Protection 1, which is quite nice. A little, it might even be a little bit early for it. <laughs> Diving planes, better submarines. We can always ratchet up the submarine 
offensive by going unrestricted, which has the possibility of pissing off other nations. I don't. It, it, that also costs you prestige, but we might be doing a little bit better on prestige now. So far, no activity from this raider, but we've invaded uh, this. So the big red box shows you that there's an invasion going on. The little crossed swords shows you that the invasion is happening at Guam. U.S. troops are resisting the uh, attacks by German forces. Well, we know that we destroyed their coastal protection there, so it may not be... It's a kind of a small island. You wouldn't imagine it would take very long for Victor to be decided. <laughs> it's not like fighting in China or something. Nonetheless, so we have better fire control. That's always good. Better torpedoes, also very good. And let's, oh, oh, wow, oh, oh, nice, very nice. So we only have battleships here. So the good news is we're going to bring our very best to the fight. And it turns out in this case, our very best is a single battleship. And many people have been joking about this, that our tactics are very strange. We're bringing single battleships. This is, a, someone called it the basically the pocket battleship tactic. <laughs> I really like that one. Um, it's, it's definitely not usual. We wouldn't be expecting this. Um, it's just... A product of our circumstances. So let's go chase this fleet down as fast as po wait a second. Sink two transports. Why are we sinking transports? It's our invasion. Oh, maybe they had no ships in the area, so it was. Aha, uh -huh, we got it. Maybe they had no ships in the area, so it was um, automatically a success. Now, this is going to be a very dangerous mission because I suspect, and we can now see that there's going to be some destroyers. I'm not worried about the armored cruisers. We're just going to pick at things from a distance. How about that? Not too much of a distance, but we have absolutely no idea what their torpedo range is, not having torpedoes ourselves. So I think we're going to risk it a little bit because we want to get in there and sink these things, but, you know, obviously within reason. This is still, I would say, too far away. Half of our distance surely is too far away. Our six inch guns will probably be going after the destroyers. Our bigger guns are gonna go after, oh, oh God, the Augusta. It's, I, that was actually quite a few turns. Let's see, okay, it was just a hit on them. Is she already on fire? This is quite an issue. So dual purpose, which they don't have access to. They have heavy, a <laughs> which is due to their dual purpose. I really cannot wait. They have a catapult with aircraft. What the hell? <laughs> they know where we are. They're launching like the Wrights brothers. I mean, the, the, the airplanes that they could launch with a catapult. What does it even mean? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, so there is a second wave over here, which we should just at least pay attention to. I'm not going to take the bait and like try to travel in too quickly. I'm just going to do my own thing. Let's slow down to normal and maybe run at speed. See, Augusta like taking some heavy damage or something. I don't know why she has come to a, a stop. So they actually hit our hole and did nothing. Yeah, that's a very good blast. So the other one is a San Diego, which is a little bit better. It also has a catapult with aircraft is a little absurd. Um, this one has lower armor as well. And although those these don't really matter much in terms of um, like how much damage we're doing to their fleet, we're not substantially impacting their, their standing or whatever. Um, taking all these ships out though does reduce the strategic points on the board. And that's important, oh god, no. And that's important so that we have an opportunity to, um, you know, do more naval invasions with better superiority. They maybe not be able to raid as much. So I think, do we want to chase down this Augusta? I think right before it gets to be dark, I'm going to make a big lumbering turn, avoid the torpedoes of those destroyers. That looks like a good, and then yeah, let's pick on the Augusta and we know where to go after it's dark. We're just going to make a beeline right through their lines. Looks like the Drayton here has, it's not having a good day. Yeah, and we do want to pick those off as much as possible just to prevent, oh God, no. <laughs> just prevent those torpedoes from being fired. Okay, this is bad. Okay, that's not bad. She only had, I think, two inch 
turrets. So not too surprising. Let's do a hard turn to try to avoid any torpedoes she may have launched at us. Final action. That one's certainly a goner. And what is this? Is this the transport? Yes. 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 Now we're just going to blaze through this. Pick on these guys. Hit whatever we want. We just only need to sink two, but the more we can sink, the better as well. So we're just probably one-shotting these. <laughs> Boom, you're dead. Boom, you're dead. Like, I look at these guys are blowing up and just going down immediately. What's this, though? We've got to be a little bit careful. Not all of these will be transport ships. These guys are very fast, though, for whatever they are. I think that they're very fast. That is not... This is, these are transports. I'm sure we've sank the two required already. There it is. Very nervous about these potential torpedoes coming in. Okay, let's go to normal. This is a really fast transport. <laughs> How are you keeping up with me? Okay, there we got it. A small merchant. It's probably a destroyer. I think the more of these we gun down, the better. What was that pop-up? I don't know. Probably about ammunition. Alright. So let's go back and finish off anybody over here. We've done well. Obviously, we're doing really well. <laughs> they did, that one just sank in front of us. <laughs> Limped over and then sank. <laughs> so yeah, this was an extremely successful mission. Hmm. Oh, well, it's not over yet. <sighs> just when I was about to take a drink. Yeah, they know what's coming. Guns to the right. Guns to the left. And that's it. All right. So not wanting to risk any other confrontations just in case it's not a confrontation we, you know, just in case we get the one where it ends up being the torpedo to the face. We, oh, we saw it in an unknown ship. Oh yeah, this is not good. Let's turn tail. It'll be very hard for them. How are these ships faster than us? It's just another transport. Well, you did it to yourself, buddy. I was actually trying to run away from you. Oh, wow, she's dead. <laughs> wow, that was quick. All right, home we go, Homeward Bound. A fantastic set of movies when I was a kid about some dogs and a cat. Ah. A great success, the Kaiser will be very happy. I know Admiral Tor Turpitz is very happy. And this should um, assist in our invasion of Guam as well. So we sank one of the two. We sank 10 of the six. So they had 5,000 bonus for five surviving merchants, but it's obviously still a major victory. Mission was accomplished, ship, di ship differential. So it's kind of funny, actually, each merchant is 1,000 points. That's good to know. Because the, the, how many points did we get for sinking the merchants? Let's see how many merchants are worth. They're worth zero. Wait, no, sorry, there were 300. Okay, so they're worth, look at these are the light ones, these are the heavy ones. So let's just say about 500 apiece. So you have to sink double the number of merchants that you leave. Wow, it's brutal. And I'd like to kind of abstract this or imagine role play that it was a, uh, a, a supply for the troops that are beleaguered on the island. There's a, those were some, some, some supplies inbound to help out in the situation there. And uh, hopefully our actions there prevented them from getting the necessary supplies. Maybe they're running low on ammunition at this point. But that's the only invasion we're gonna be able to do. So I'm happy that, I would be very happy to accomplish that before the end of this war. We obviously put in the time and the effort. And then the big question is, and we should really settle this now, Philippines or what? We could start, okay, value of zero, base capacity of five, midway is useless. Hawaii is absolutely not.
The U.S. doesn't have much else to provide for us unless we do want to step foot into the Caribbean. I somehow think it's... Ah. I somehow think it's not a good idea. Uh, all right, so the Mikasa class... Uh, this is definitely... 1903, this is definitely beyond their original one, unless they had it built at a foreign port, which I don't think the AI does. I'm not impressed. I basically think that we could take it. We could take it. Okay, we damaged an enemy battleship. I'm actually still happy when we don't sink them. <laughs> I don't like the submarine events. I really don't. Not even when there are friendly submarine events. All right, so if we finally, oh my gosh, we sank four US merchant ships. I wasn't really paying that close attention. Were we doing that well in the past? And the Louisville is actually sinking a whole bunch of our ships in Northern Europe. I'd love to chase her, but okay. So we definitely want to be doing these. And it's the Schleswig Holstein. Okay, so they're all getting a chance here. And this is another transport raid. It is in the morning, so we should have better visibility this time. Okay, and we have control, so we'll move up since kind of split the difference between where we were going and we'll go to max speed. Should see something around here. Uh-huh. Yep, there they are. All right. So let's cruise on in. It's just going to give us a whole bunch of these pop-ups. So we'll just keep doing this until we've populated there. Some more relief convoys coming in. These poor Americans. Not going to be happy with the result, I think. And they may not, they may have given up on escorting them. <laughs> oh, you poor fools. Okay, there it is. There's the escort. One, is this the San Diego class? Okay, she herself has an escort. I would like to focus fire on her first. So we're going to make a line, beeline for her. The wind side is to the east. So let's, if we want to take the wind advantage, not that it matters, but just to speed things up, perhaps. The New Orleans class. Okay, so another different class. 9,700. How many ships have we sunk of the Americans so far? It's obviously been a very good war for us. Okay, starting to land the hits. Let's get them in. Let's get this done. We gotta go back home. And it's two o'clock. Something to pay attention to. I also wanna make sure we're keeping an eye on where these merchant ships are going. Uh, New Orleans is already in a bad way. Really bad way. We're letting her... Okay, just trying to keep an eye on like four things at once. I think she's going to go down. She's spinning us around. She's dead stopped. Okay, we're just going to pretend that she's going down. Okay, we need to... She's west of the red dot. When we want to go back to her, we just got to go west of the red dot. Now let's just sink every single one of these. To hell with them all. And these destroyers, you could tell that they're just like, what do we do, boss? Should we go in? Should we not go in? What's the plan? <laughs> there's uh, there's no solution here. I mean, if we play our cards right, which is to flee any attempt to torpedo us, they just they don't stand a chance. And obviously, this convoy being intercepted was just a very, very, very bad day for all of them. I'm going to swing back and check out the armored cruiser. See if she's still there. I don't think we even have torpedoes. Yeah, I gave up on the, all the torpedoes. I think that they're actually picking up survivors. There she is. So let's go ahead and see if we can pick up one of these destroyers. These destroyers are really dangerous. So in some sense, it would be great to be able to eliminate them. Uh, she's already down. Okay, so she's down. The whole thing is destroyed. There's nothing left. So now we're just going to play games with these destroyers until they go away. Or is that one light cruiser over here? <laughs> okay, all right, it's getting to be dark. Now I don't want to be here anymore. We're gonna tiptoe this one. Not sure this is a good idea, but let's see if we can get her. Oh, you're playing with fire, Tortuga. Tor Torpits. Okay, we bend away. And away we go. 
head back to port at cruise speed. And there it is. So, this is just a horrible victory for, I mean, an amazing victory. They actually got 691 people picked up. Well, congratulations to the U.S. on that. But they didn't have a single surviving one. All 12 were killed. So, obviously, brutal, brutal fights. Oh, man, that was brutal. Well, I don't know how Guam will hold out much longer. We just didn't really let any of them survive that. Cameroon. Actually, <gasps> there it is. U.S. forces have surrendered on the island. And we'll continue this war because, one, the budget's nice for us. And it, no, we won't. <laughs> okay, peace, peace in our time, right? Mmm. I knew they'd do this. I knew they'd do it. So Midway is actually a value of zero. <laughs> Interesting. Otherwise, we can't get anything. Jeez. I mean, I guess, I guess we could take Alaska, but I don't really want to. Man, if only we had gotten one more point. I mean, 12,000 to 2,000. This is a pretty substantial victory. I would always, I always like to examine these things. Excuse me real fast. Hope the microphone was close enough that you guys were hearing me okay. Uh, yeah, so the things, excuse me, uh, the things we could do is maybe take like Guantanamo Bay and Haiti. I would like to take, where is Tortuga? I think it's on Puerto Rico, right? There's an island called Tortuga. How appropriate that we should try to take it. So with two different islands, I kind of I kind of see a little bit of justification for going into the Caribbean. I would really like. Uh, yeah, there's no reason we don't really need. To, okay, let's just do it. We took Guam. We'll have to take the Philippines another time. If we go to war with the U.S. again, it's going to be very difficult to hold on to the Caribbean holdings. We'll just have to know that. Like, we're kind of... <laughs> oh. Or we could just take Panama. Which... Does that allow us control over the Panama Canal? I'm not sure. But if it does, that's amazing. Yeah, we're going to do that. Um, Great Britain, then send a diplomatic note because we're ready to go war with you. You're next, buddy. Come and get it. Yeah, so I think the three best researchers will be Great Britain, France, and the US, and definitely Great Britain and the US, so we'll keep those on. Now, foreign stations has increased where? Ah, the Caribbean, of course. So we'll have to send some of our light cruisers over there. Our monthly funds are terrible, my gosh. We are not gonna make it 10 months. We are not gonna make it. I better halt these immediately, because otherwise, uh, we won't be getting any of them out. So, oh boy, that is not good. Now, we can uh, we can send all of our ships home. In fact, the fastest way to send them home <laughs> is just to refit them. I think that's what we'll end up doing here. So, what, what do these look like? What has improved in the time since we last refit them? Is it nothing? Better, 12-inch guns. So, how much does this actually cost? 10 million for that. Now, let me look at that one more time. Okay, our refit right now is, we're at 58 tons remaining. I don't think that that's how it was, so apparently there's been some weight savings that can be applied uh, to the ship. Do we want the better 12-inch guns? I mean, I really think we do. This is... I mean, this is our fleet right now, <laughs> These ba are these battleships. The beer halls, what's our 11-inch gun situation? Yeah, let's actually just take a look at the guns. I, I really love to look at these gun situation and start to do some calculations in my head. So we have better 8-inch guns. We have 8-inch guns means that we actually could have done that light cruiser, or we could, but now we have no money. Um, I might take, actually... Japan, who's our next target for war? We could always run it back against the US. In fact, the good news is I don't think that 
anybody has there's absolutely no way that anybody has the invasion range to get to the Panama so we'd only have to keep enough in here actually we don't even really need to worry about it basically we just need to win the war um, we could definitely oh no we can't invade there's not a yeah so actually it's kind of useless for us to do a war with the US so keeping that in mind we'll watch tensions tensions that would be productive for us Great Britain absolutely there's lots of colonies and we would like to actually start to minimize their potential threat as a nation since they're so strong Japan is not a terrible one but can we get to any Japanese holdings I don't think so I think Great Britain might be the might be the only nation we can actually reach right now maybe Baltic states are 10 so they are it is possible to invade them yep yeah, okay so we could go to war with Russia that's I mean we could knock them down a peg we could actually actually take their is this home no Lao Tung so they we could actually take the Lao Tung um, Peninsula holdings as well including the famous site of the Japanese surprise attack Port Arthur okay so Russia Great Britain I don't see any French holdings close enough. I do not regret my decision to do Panama. Not knowing whether or not that controls the Panama Strait, I had to take it. Okay, well anyways, we can you know continue to scrutinize over what to do with all that a little bit later. Let's get uh, one ship to be foreign tonnage. Sorry, and then move one ship to the Caribbean. Sorry, actually we'll just move the same one and then get it to be active fleet when it gets there. Okay, that is not good. We are definitely not in good shape, but as I said, what will we do? 1906, I think that the refit we're gonna wanna do is just absolutely nothing. Just take them in. In fact, one thing we could do, as I've mentioned this before, is to kind of cheat our refit, is we could actually give this ship more ammunition. And I suggest that not because, not just because it's you know gonna be a cheap way to lower the cost of the ship for a while, but we actually have the weight remaining to do it. Oh, and the better guns, but those are way too expensive. But because we want to do all of them at the same time, we're let's just get all of these out of the Southeast Asia, move them all back to Northern Europe. So who do we want to leave there though? Because I suppose we have, ton do we have foreign tonnage requirements there? We don't. Okay, then we'll vacate the area. So we have some in Northeast Asia, I guess we can look at it here. Where do we have foreign? No, it doesn't show us. You just gotta click. Yeah, so we don't have foreign tonnage requirements anywhere except for Indian Ocean and Southeast Asia and now the Caribbean. So <laughs> our, you know, ne the necessity of foreign stations has gone up quite a bit because of this maneuver of taking the Panama Canal, but, well, well Panama, but we assume the Panama Canal. Let's get everyone else home and that will also reduce our cost then we can put people to um, reserve fleet uh, I don't know how long it'll be to the next war it's kind of a pain to move this one back and then move it back out eventually but we'll do that because it will be slightly cheaper in the end to have them at northern Europe our home base your ships cost a little bit less maintenance when they're home. Okay, so we only need one here. I really wish that you could select multiple ships like this and move them both, but you weren't able to do it in World Waves. Yeah, still are not able to do it. Okay, so they're all moving home, except for one who's going to the Caribbean, but yeah, we need that one there. And then all the ones, especially the beer halls, they're gonna go directly to Mothball State. Well, okay, reserve. Mothball's pretty extreme. And then everyone's going to reserve. This will save us a little bit of money. 8.4, yeah, it's 1.4 million just for the destroyers and the light cruisers. So we'll get everyone to reserves pretty soon. Okay, so next turn. Some more people back. I guess we'll just put everyone in Northern Europe to reserves. 
we're gonna have better dreadnoughts out pretty quickly and i know that i really would like to get better ships out there but we are going to be limited diplomatic note note at all active fleet we have a few more here and these guys are coming back yeah yep okay that's good good we could use the that was four million a year not a whole lot <laughs> but something I guess and they're all back okay well reserve fleet then you two are not back yet okay keep going technology is everything so one percent weight savings gradual rate of fire improvement how's our research doing just the general research yeah okay cross deck fire i mean that's important improved hoist this is giving us good rate of fire. You can see that the fire control is firing off nicely. Uh, the submarines is the only thing I chose to be low. Yeah, I guess ASW hasn't even been invented yet. Ooh, this will spell doom. Huh. Our unrest level is so low that I don't want to do that. Man, stop stealing our stuff. All right, can we get away with one? Five more months, five to, no. Just wait a little bit longer. By all means, if we don't sell it to them, they're just gonna steal it. Wow, they increased our injury by 500 tons. I would like to expand some things, but okay, very good. Improved annealing. Annealing, that's funny. Simulated annealing, for those of you who know that. <laughs> Something I'm familiar with. Anyway, gradual improvement of armor quality. This is improved annealing, is just when you heat something up super hot. It's kind of like. And then, uh, yeah, you probably have seen it. The blacksmith with his sword tempers it with heat. No to all. And now I think we'll make it. So we'll unpause this one. That should be okay for three more months. Wow, they have 14 inch guns. Come on, steal the technology. I really want them to steal. Uh, damn it. Stop stealing technology from us. Go steal it from other people. Oh, what? Our new dreadnought is commissioned to the Navy. During trials, it is found the ship is somewhat overweight. No, it's four center line. This is this is quite good, but somewhat overweight. What does that mean? What does this mean? Ah, uh. what? Not. So that just means some of the weight that we had built in to improve her is not there anymore. I'm really happy to see the better quality guns are being used. I could not remember whether we had those on her or not. Oh my gosh, she's still amazing. I'm just looking at her. I'm wondering in her, like just staring in awe at this beautiful creation. I think three quality zero 12 inch guns, three dual turrets is gonna play havoc on the world. So now we should see a dreadnought line, and yep, we are not alone. So although we are by far, far and away the leaders in the dreadnought field, actually Russia has some already. They have 60,000 which are not being built. I guess they're being rebuilt. Same thing with Japan, what's going on there? Maybe we weren't the first people to lay down a dreadnought. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess we just did it, and Great Britain already has two out, so... You know, this is important enough to me. Let's go ahead and look at the ships and find out who's the winner here. Who's the one who done done it? 
Yeah, ours is 1907, and the British, darn those British, they got one out in 1906. 1900, so they're not even done yet. This one is out. The Rishi Lu probably beat us as well. The Russians have not beat us. Neither have the Japanese. Neither have the Americans. Interesting, because if there's no location here, or you can just look over here, they're still being built. So we're the third nation in the world. I would say a tie between us and France. Because I, as a German, role-playing the t heated tensions between Germany and uh, France, which did exist historically in this time. Well, hey, we're almost to the, the war. But if you think Germany and France... Yeah, actually, I was going to say, if you think Germany and France had the highest tensions, well, yeah, you're probably right. It wasn't much better with Russia, but it was. Anyway, so we have three more dreadnoughts coming out, and then it will be time to start thinking about our next design. I have to say I'm not extremely happy with our light cruisers. They've actually performed pretty well, but this low belt, low turrets, all these things, it could be a liability. Go for the win. Okay, we're getting all kinds of good stuff. Someone must shoulder the burden and guarantee order in these cases, send a force. This is in Angola. Yes! Wow, we took Angola! Fantastic! We've made some unexpected advances in machinery development. Okay. Small two boilers. And we now have ASW unlocked. Good. We'll leave it on medium, I think. It is important enough that I don't think I want to put it to low, but... Anyways, Angola is now ours. We will improve this base. Do we have the money to do it? Yes. So that's my main thing is improved bases don't cost money in the long run. They don't increase the maintenance cost of the base. They unfortunately don't really build the economy by adding value to it, but I think it's important. Actually, what I, I forgot to do something very important. I forgot to build two six inch guns here and maybe at least one six inch gun at Guam. I don't know why I necessarily needed two guns in Angola. It can really only be threatened by France. So you know what? I'm going to go over and cancel that. Oh, and now West Africa has patrol requirements. Hooray. Please tell me my ships are over 5,000. Good. All right, so who's the first on the list? You. Horn station and move to West Africa. So the foreign station requirements are becoming brutal. Now go over to coastal fortifications and let's cancel one of these two in Angola. No, just scrap. Yes. 46 was canceled. Very good. I can't believe it's almost time to end the episode already. It just feels like it has flown by. Cannot believe it's, you know, gosh. <laughs> Already f almost 40 minutes into the episode. All right, one more turn, right? That's the old, the old adage. They finished their working up. We'll probably, it seems that we have the smallest tonnage of large cruisers. ACO, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it then. We are compelled, I think. We are compelled to design a battle cruiser. I think I'll start fiddling with this now and then we'll we can solicit feedback. Four centerline turrets means that cross deck fire is obsolete, so now we won't be doing that. Again, we won't be doing that. Let's clear these turrets. I think we're gonna go with 12 inch. Hmm, we don't have super firing yet, so this is an interesting decision, actually. We'd have to do something which looks like this hideous design that I had to put up with in my uh, J Japanese playthrough. I didn't do this one, but this is possible. Okay, cramped accommodations, heck no. Now I have been talking to exterior G of all people, and I've also, so some other people have mentioned that there is some value in using cramped accommodation short range ships just for coastal defense. 
So especially as our home port is in Northern Europe and we're always gonna want some ships there, it does make sense for us to have some kind of ship there. I don't know if it should be a battle cruiser. I really dislike that we don't have super firing turrets. It's cutting me deep right now. Uh... Well, Kaiser, I think you're gonna have to suffer for a little bit longer with uh, the pains of us having the smallest amount of, is it really the smallest? Yeah, because people are starting to build battle cruisers. Oh my gosh, that's right. Because that's because of the game bug where they didn't build battleships, so they all build armored cruisers instead. That's not my fault. That's not my fault. I guess Kaiser Kaiser Wilhelm is not happy with an excuse like it's not my fault. <laughs> Nor should it be. That's never a good solution. Uh, okay, let's put this one active fleet. Caribbean actively fine, very good. Yeah, I don't know what to do with this uh, with this battle cruiser situation. I just really have a hard time building a battle cruiser so obsolete as this one. Wow. Okay, that's. I mean, that's an idea, but we might as well use cross deck fire if we're going to do that. So the advantage that cross deck fire would have, what is it? That we'd be able to get three turrets going on more often. Um, so this is maybe what I'm thinking of doing. The funnels are wrong. The turret placement is, looks a little weird. This funnel's going away. I don't know. I really don't know. All right, well, I'm gonna think about it off camera. I'm gonna give you guys some time for your feedback. I don't think that we wanna build this, and no, it won't be called the Wittwenbacher. Did we lose the Wittwenbacher? Didn't we already have one called the, oh no, it, this will, that was the old name for the battleship, but she was supposed to be a battlecruiser. So that will be one of the names of the battlecruisers, but not the title of the battlecruiser class. Nonetheless, uh, yeah, I'm gonna put this, uh, put a cut in here. So I'll think about these things ponder these things on my own time and we'll be I'll see you back for the next episode until then thanks for watching and take care